Amen. to your neighbor and tell them, imagine it is 17th of December. Imagine tumetoboa. We may not know how, but tume. Weda tusijue ni vipi lakini tumetoboa. The Lord carried us through. Bwana ametuwezesha. And I want to take this opportunity to thank God. Na kwa hivyo nataka kuchukua fursa kumshukuru Mungu. For that which is done in my life and in our lives. Kwa sababu ya kitu ambacho amefanya katika maisha yangu na yako. And for this opportunity to just bring the word of God this 17th day of December. Na kwa fursa hii kuliateni neno katika Disemba 17. Only a few more days to 2024. Siku chache tu zimebaki tuingie mwaka 24. I also want to take this opportunity to thank God for our bishop and our mom. Kwa hivyo unachukua fursa kuwashukuru askofu na mama yetu atakao atakupo. Yes, if you mean to clap just appreciate them better. Kama unuia kupiga makofi, piga makofi. Amen. They have been an encouragement. Wamekuwa wakutia moyo. You know when things are tough in a home, wakati mambo ni mazito hata nyumbani you look up to a parent unamwangalia mzazi and so when the parent doesn't look worried na kama mzazi onekani kama akona hofu you sit and relax unakaa pale na unatulia when he walks you walks wakati anatembea unatembea bwana asifiwe amen akisimama na wewe umefanya nini nasimama umesimama because there's that which he can see that you can't see kwa sababu kuna kitu anayeona na wewe huwezi ona and so we really really appreciate our bishop and our mama hivyo tunawashukuru sana askofu pamoja na mama yetu because they have been kwa sababu amekuwa an encouragement to us. Wa msaada wa kutia moyo kwetu. Amen. Amina. Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. Again turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you going up country for Christmas? Uliza jirani yako kama anaenda mashabani kwa Christmas. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Ama muulize, are you going to up country to eat Christmas? Ama unaenda mashabani <laughs> kukula Christmas? <laughs> Because we normally say we are going to eat Sababu Christmas. Sababu unasema tunaenda kukula Christmas. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Most of us will be traveling this coming week. Because Christmas is a, a celebration that is uh, done worldwide. And so today even before you go for that Christmas. Kwa hivyo leo atakapo hujaenda Christmas. Or before you eat that Christmas. Ama kabla ukule Christmas hii. I'd like us just to look at a few things. Tuangalie mambo tu machache. The book of Luke chapter 2 verse 41 to 50. Luka ah Mlango wa pili ya 41 hadi 50. I want to read uh, to read it um, over. Ana uh, tutasomea. Is what the Bible says. His parents whose parents Jesus parents. Mzazi wa Yesu. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old and the land they were 12 years. Tia mstari pale. Old. Jesus was 12 years old. Kwa miaka 12. They went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it But supposing him to have been in the company they went a day's journey and sought him among the relatives and acquaintances So when they did not find him they returned to Jerusalem seeking him Now it was that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers both listening to them and asking them questions And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers So when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said to him son why have you done this to us look your father and I have sought you anxiously And he said to them why did you seek me Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Our topic today is Christ, the reason for the season. Amada yetu ni Kristo aliyemeinuliwa kwa sababu ya msimu. Christ the reason for the season. Kristo abaye ni sababu ya msimu. We are also going to read Exodus chapter 33 verse 1 to 3 Pia kutoka 33 mwanzo kuanzia mwanzo Hallelujah Exodus 33 it can be kutoka mm-hmm. 33 Then the Lord said to Moses depart and go up from here you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt to the land of which I swore to Abraham Isaac and Jacob saying to your descendants I'll give it And I will send my angel before you and I'll drive out the Canaanite and the Amorite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite all those ites eh? 
Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way. For you are a stiff-necked people. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, these two stories talk something that is very, very key. And as we start with the book of Exodus, this is a season when God had already delivered the Israelites from Egypt and he was with them in the wilderness. They walked together and he had given them the leader Moses. And in as much as he had delivered him, them with the righteous right hand, they got to a point until they forgot their God. They lost their God. Because from time to time Moses would go to the mountain to seek counsel and guidance from God on how to lead these Israelites. And so when you read uh, chapter 32 and you can read that at your own time, Moses has gone up the mountain. He has gone there for 40 days and 40 nights to seek God on behalf of the Israelites. But the Israelites under the leadership of one priest whose name was Heron decided to think that Moses might have gone up there and might not be coming back. And so they decided that they were going to create a God for themselves out of the jewelries that they had. And they created a golden calf whom they later on started worshipping as if it was a god. And so God was not happy with what had happened. So we come to chapter 33 verse 1 and God is saying to Moses and the Israelites he is commanding them to leave and get going to the promised land. But he's telling them, I'm not going to go with you because you're a stiff-necked people. However, I am going to release an angel. My angel will go with you. And even though I'm not going with you, I'm releasing my angel. I will fulfill all the promises that I promised your father Abraham. I will still give you the land that flows with milk and honey. I will still give you everything that I'd spoken to your father Abraham. And but the only thing is that I will not be in your midst. And I was just looking at that scripture and thinking if it was in the current dispensation that the Lord tells you I am giving you my angel and just like I had promised you that I'll give you heavy machines, heavy vehicles, you will still get them. You will still get plots. You know, we normally call plots maguta maguta. You know, if it was in our current dispensation, you'd have said, so long as I get the plot, so long as I get the vehicles and get everything, Mungu wewe, you can still remain there. I am okay going with your angel. But the Bible says, if you read on the same chapter 33, and you will, I'm giving you that assignment to go back and read. Moses said, no, no, no. In as much as I know you are telling us that you are going to give us everything you promised, we cannot leave this place without your presence. He says we are not interested in the angel, we are interested in you. 
It's like he was saying, it's not the angel who rescued us out of Egypt. It was you, our God, and so it is you who is going to lead us to the promised land. He knew the dangers that would have been able to befall them if they went with the angel minus God. And how much more do we need God in our dispensation today? Whether things are difficult, whether the economy is hard, or whether things are good, we still need the guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ all our way. My prayer this Christmas season is that you'll say, I'm not interested in going with the angel. I am interested in you, Lord Jesus. I am not leaving this place unless I'm living with you. Because when you lose God, you've lost everything. There's a singer who once sang and said, wewe, wewe, niki kupata, ninapata viyote. Mwibaji moja haka sema, niki kupata, nimepata viyote. Because in him there is everything that you need there is everything that I need. Kwa sababu ndani mwake kuna kila kitu ninachohitaji na pia mimi ninachohitaji. When we take him along with us or we allow him to guide our path then we have everything that is expected of us. Tunapomruhusu aende pamoja nazi na tuongoza katika jiani tuna kila kitu ambacho tunahitaji. In the story in the book of Luke. Kakita sumulizi ambayo kakita kitabu cha Luka. The Bible talks of two parents who have gone for a religious celebration the, the parents of Jesus and they have gone for the celebration of the Passover the celebration that was actually concerning the Lord Jesus Christ though he was still a teenager. And days after the celebration, they walked out of the place where the celebration was being had and they started walking away, not even checking to see that their son Jesus Christ was here. They walked, what the Bible says, a day's Jani living Jesus Christ behind. And so as it were, they lost Jesus during a religious celebration. And I'm tempted to think that as they walked that one day's journey, they must have been walking in a crowd. Because how do we explain the fact that they thought Jesus was with some other people? The Bible says that they looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. Meaning, they were walking in a crowd. And they lost Jesus. The Bible says that when they noticed, then they started looking for him. It took them three days to find him. And where did they find him? Right at the place where they had left him. In the presence of God. Amen. You know, Mary was the mother, but still she lost. Mary Joseph was the father but he still lost him. And so it does not matter how many years we have been born again. We could have been so busy with the, uh, the spiritual liturgies and have left Jesus behind. You could be serving in this house and it is beautiful. We love it when you are serving but the question is are you serving alongside Jesus Christ or you lost it. Maybe you never miss church any Sunday. You are always here every Sunday. But the question is, do you have him with you? It's not a matter of how long you have been born again. You could have been born again 15 years, 20 years, whatever length of time. It doesn't matter. You can still lose him in the midst of the hustle and bustle of your life. Realize 
realize that Joseph and Mary lost him not in relationship but in fellowship. Lakini Yusuf na Maria walimpoteza si kwa sababu ya ungano lakini kwa sababu ya ukusanyiko. Because Mary still was the mother of Jesus. Kwa sababu Maria bado alibakia kuwa mama yake. She did not lose that relationship with Jesus. Hakupoteza ule uhusiano pamoja na Yesu. She was still Jesus mother. Alikuwa ye bado ni mama yake Yesu. Yes, she had lost him. Lakini alikuwa kushampoteza. Joseph was still his father. Yusuf alikuwa bado ni baba yake. Yet he had lost him. Ila tu alikuwa bado amempoteza. So it is very possible that we could still be born again because there was a day we repeated a prayer somewhere and we received Jesus in our lives yet have lost him. Tunaweza kuwa bado tumeokoka kwa sababu kuna wakati tulikiri obi mahali fulani lakini tukuwe bado tumempoteza Yesu. It is possible to lose him in fellowship. Inawezekana ukampoteza katika ule ule ushirika. Such that all that is left within us is praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord, but Really really when was the last time you had fellowship with him? Inaweza kuwa kwamba tumempoteza kwa sababu wakati mwingine unasema tu bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe lakini ni wakati mgani ulikuwa na ushirika wa mwisho na yeye. When was the last time you just said Jesus I am making room for the two of us you and I I want us to have fellowship the two of us. Siku gani ya mwisho ambao ulimwambia nataka tu una ushirika mimi na wewe peke yetu? When was the last time you said Lord I am seated here sit on this seat next to me and i want you to teach me your word siku gani ya mwisho ulimwambia keti katika kiketi kicho kadona yangu na ulifunze neno lako it's very easy to lose him lose fellowship with him ni rahisi sana kupoteza ushirika na yeye and just like joseph and mary lost fellowship with him na kama vile maria na yusuf walipoteza ushirika wao there is a man in the bible the one who wrote the book of psalms there's a point where he lost fellowship with god kuna mna aba ameandika kitabu cha zaburi kuna mahali alipoteza ushirika. That is King David. Huyo ni mfalme Daudi. And he gets to a point he realizes it and he says, Anakifika mahali anatabwa hili na kisha anasema, Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Usiniondoe katika uwepo wako, e Bwana. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Nirejeshe furaha ya wokovu wako. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. David lost it. Daudi alimpoteza. There was a man by the name Samson. Kuna mtu kwa jina Samson. In the book of Judges who lost it. Katika kitabu cha Wamu muzi alipempoteza pia and he woke up as if it was any other day waking up as usual amoka kama 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 kawaida kile siku yoyote akaamka when Delilah called out to him and said the philistines are coming he had always been used to waking up and breaking all the fetters and killing the philistines alikuwa amezoea kila wakati akisimama na vuja vuja na kuangamiza wa filisti and so he thought this day was going to be the same as any other day na akafikiria hii siku itakuwa ya kawaida kama zile siku zingine so when Delilah shouted the philistines are coming he woke up and thought the fetters were to be broken oh, okay. Only to yabu. realize that his strength had gone he had lost the presence of God. Alifikiria tu wakati ataamsha na Delilah ataamka kama kawaida na afanye vitu kama kawaida alikuwa hajajua kwamba uwepo wa Bwana umemwondokea. The question I have for you when was the last time you had fellowship with him not in church a church gathering like this but you and him. Ni wakati wa gani wa mwisho ambao ulikuwa na ushirika na yeye si katika umati wa kanisa kama hili lakini ila wewe na yeye peke yenu. A singer sang a song that is very profound and he say Mwibaji akaiba wibo mzuri na akasema that um you are all that matters wewe ni kila kitu kinachohitajika i will make room for the two of us nitatengeneza sehemu kwa sababu ya mimi na wewe i am willing to put you in front of everything that concerns my life niko radhi kukuweka mbele ya kila kitu ambacho kinahusika katika maisha yangu and for him because he is a singer na kwa sababu yeye ni mwibaji he says akasema that I'll put you in front of my melody. Nitakuweka mbele ya sauti zangu za uibaji. How many of us here are willing to put him in front of our businesses? Wangapi hao wako hapa wako radhi kumweka mbele ya biashara? Are we willing to put him in front of our families? Je, uko radhi kumweka mbele ya familia? Are we willing to put him in front of our jobs? Je, tuko radhi kumweka mbele ya kazi zetu? Oh my brother, my sister, are you willing to put him in front of your pride? Je, sijui kama uko radhi kumweka mbele ya mabo yako yote praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe putting him in front kumweka mbele so that you can have fellowship you and him ili uweze kupata ushirika baina yako na yeye as we read first corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 wa korintho wa kansa 10:12 if we can have that first corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 says vinasema therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls wacha yote asimamae kwamba akuwe makini 
There are times when we hold on to past experiences which makes us think that you cannot lose Jesus. But scripture there is telling us that we need to take heed. Let us not be proud of our standing. But get to a point where we are seeking fellowship with him because it's only him who causes us to be praise the name of Jesus it does not matter what you used to do in the days of old we are talking about today remember we are saying Christ is the reason for the season many times we stand back and we behave like old vessels that used to be in a big house and so you hear Pastor Millicent saying I used to pray for three hours I used to witness I used to sing I used to worship the question is do I do it now am I still praying now am I still connected with him now praise the name of the Lord because it's not a matter of how he touched you yesterday you're telling him touch me one more time touch me one more time I felt your touch yesterday but that was for yesterday I fellowshiped with you yesterday but that was for yesterday I need you now I need to walk with you now I need to hear here you speak now. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. And they lost him at the celebration of Passover. You could be thinking that you can only lose Jesus in a pub. My brother, my sister, I want to remind you today that as we get into the celebration of Christmas, it's very easy for us to focus so much on the celebration until we forget it's about Jesus. Until we end up celebrating the birthday of one whom we have locked outside. Praise the name of the Lord. We must incorporate him in this season. As we go up country, we must incorporate him in this season. Because Christmas is not just about food. It's not just about new clothes. Praise the name of the Lord. Christmas is about Jesus. It's about worshiping Jesus. And I'm not against food. Amen. If you go up country, you eat. Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, kama itakuwa nyingi unibebe. Amen. you carry for me I will eat it is good to eat but at the center of everything is Jesus Christ yes. Praise the name of the Lord. It is Jesus Christ. I'd like us to read Revelation chapter 2 verse 2 to 5. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. I know your works your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. That is the Lord saying. This was written to the church in Ephesus. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. Mm -hmm. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember therefore from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. God begins with a good report. You know the way someone normally comes to you and tells you I have two reports. Bwana anaanza kwa ripoti nzuri. Kama vile mtu anakuja na kwambia niko na ripoti mbili. I have a good report and a bad report. And many times we love starting with the good report. So he is, te- he is telling them, I know you. I know your works. And this morning, the Lord is moving right in this sanctuary. He's moving on the ground floor, in the balcony, overflow tent. He is moving. You cannot say we are so many so he won't notice where you're sitting. He can notice where you are. And this is is one thing that he is saying I know you Millicent I know you Jane I know you Sam I know your works I know the way you hate evil I know how you have been walking all around but this I have against you you have lost your first love you have lost the first love petesa upendo wako wa kwanza in other words kwa jina kwa jina like you have been moving ni kama kwamba umekuwa ukitembea but minus me lakini hujakuwa nami i am not in your business mimi si yuko katika biashara zako you have been ushering umekuwa ukifanya ushamani minus me na lakini hujakuwa nami you have been singing in praise and worship umekuwa ukiiba katika sifa na ibada minus me lakini you have been in the ministry team katika kwa kundi la huduma minus me pasi nami you have been teaching sunday school umekuwa ukifunza sunday school but minus me because you left me kwa sababu unauliniacha when you lost the first love wakati ulipotesa upendo wako wa kwanza praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe for peter for for joseph and uh, and mary kwa sa, kwa yusuf na maria they lost him walimpoteza and they went a whole day's journey na wakaenda siku ya safari ya siku nzima a whole day's journey kwa safari ya siku nzima remember the more they walked walipozidi kutembea the father they went walikuwa na ongezeka kimo cha kufanya yao kila wakati wakichukua hatua wanaenda bali naye the question that i want you to ask yourself swali ambayo ningelitaka ujiulize are you still with him je ugali naye or did you lose him ama ulimpoteza how many days ago ni siku ngapi zimepita is it a month je ni mwezi is it two months ama ni miezi miwili is it six months miezi sita when was the last time siku gani you fellowship with him ukapata ushirika na yeye when was the last time ikawa lini siku ya fellowship with him wakati ni shiriki na yeye as a pastor kama mchungaji do i only read scripture je nasoma maandiko because i'm preparing to come and preach to you sababu mnajiandaa kwenda kuhubiri have i lost him je ni mempoteza praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe how far have we gone ubali gani tumeenenda how far have we gone ubali gani we must make a comeback shati tureje into the presence of god katika uwepo wa bwana we must make a comeback lazima turudi nyuma so that we can start enjoying his word ili tuanze kufurahia katika neno lake yes we must make a comeback lazima tureje remember the good old days kumbuka siku zile za kale when you got born again wakati na uliokoka you were excited ulikuwa na sisimka sana you walked with the lord na ulitembea na bwana you loved the lord na ulimpenda bwana you shared about uh, the lord jesus christ with everyone you came across na ukashiriki kuhusu yesu kwa mtu yeyote aliyekutana naye if you are like me kama ulijekuwa kama mimi maybe you were not raised in a church that had tiles huenda haukuwa na kanisa ambao liko nime kwa tiles kama hizi tiles came the other day kwa sababu hizi nimekuja siku hii if you are like me kama ulijekuwa kama mimi you were raised in a dusty floor church ulilewa katika kanisa ambao lilikuwa na mchanga chini and you would go there na ulijekuwa not care about beautiful dresses and the like na usijali kuhusu mavazi mazuri sana you kneel and call on the name of the lord ukapiga magoti na uitie jina la bwana you would weep before the lord na ugeria sana mbele za bwana you would clap your hands in an electric way because you did not have electric instruments ukapiga makofi kama vyombo vya stima maana tukua na the presence of the lord would come na uwepo wa bwana ugerishuka now that the lord has blessed us na kwa sasa bwana kwa ametubariki we have tiles on the floor tunazo saru we are so keen about our new dresses tunaangalia sana mavazi yetu we cannot yetu kneel before the lord hatuwezi kupiga magoti bele zake we are so keen we cannot praise him extravagantly tuko makini sana jinsi tunavyomwabudu where did you lose him je ulimpoteza wapi praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe i'm almost winding up niko karibu kuhitimiza revelations ufunuo chapter 3 verse 20 um Chapter 3 verse 11 to 20. Mstari wa 11 hadi 20. Revelations. Ufunuo. Behold I'm coming quickly. 
Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. I'll write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I'll write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write. This thing says the amen, the faithful, and the true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich, I've become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and, uh, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyes of that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. I want us to read verse 20 together. To go, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and die with him and he with me. Praise the name of the Lord. That scripture, behold I stand at the door. Mm? And knock. That scripture many times we have spoken it to those who are not born again, isn't it? We tell them, you know what? Jesus is standing at the door of your heart. You know he is knocking. And he cannot open for himself because the knob is on the inside. <laughs> so you're the one who can hold the knob and open. But when you read this scripture, it was not just written to the non-believer. It was written to a church, like the church that is sitting here, the church that is meeting in DCIK, Zimmerman. The church that had a people whom the Lord had blessed, they had need for nothing. They were wealthy in terms of property. But Jesus says, I am standing at the door. And as I read it, it struck me that there were maybe just a church like we are meeting here, like we met in the morning. It started with praise and worship. And after, after praise and worship, we came and did the Holy Communion. And we continued and continued. Now we are sharing the word of God. And next, you know, maybe it will be the announcements and everything. And they would walk outside, not knowing that all these religious rituals that they were doing were minus. Jesus Christ. But when the announcement was made, in freely. Spiritually, the doors were open, were, were locked. And now the Bible says that we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. That temple, does it have the Holy Spirit really? That temple, could it be having a door that has been locked and Jesus is knocking? That temple that you've been using to serve on the altar, to serve in whichever
whatever capacity you're serving are you serving in the presence of the Lord is he there Hiyo hekalu hapo imekuwa ikitumika kila wakati je inapotumika Yesu ama uwepo wa Bwana upo Is he receiving the glory Je anapokea utukufu As you walk into the sanctuary every Sunday and you sit down that temple that is seated on that seat today is the door locked and Jesus is knocking from outside Hiyo hekalu hapo imekuwa ikikuja hapa na kuabudu inapoketi pale je imefungwa na Yesu yuko nje because the church in laudations they did everything normal and they thought all was well yet the lord had been excused he was outside just like at times we can be in church and the holy spirit excused himself herself himself long time ago kama vile hilo kanisa lilikuwa pale na akili kilikuwa limefungwa kama wakati mwingine tunaweza kuwa tunaata na kuja kanisani ila tumeufunga mlango na Yesu ameondoka yuko nje I once read something and the author was saying that in many lives today and in many churches today the holy spirit excused himself many many months ago many years ago but we have not even noticed that he's not there unikasoma maandiko ya mwandishi fulani aliyekuwa anasema roho mtakatifu alijiodoa na akatoka nje siku nyingi sana ila hatujatabua kwamba yeye kushaodoka as we get into this christmas tunapoingia katika christmas hii today we can say we are opening that door tunaweza sema leo hii tunaufungua ule mlango the door of my heart mlango wa moyo wangu the door of your heart mlango wa roho yako so that whatever it is that you will be doing not just in this christmas alone but throughout as a christian you will be doing it with the presence of the lord in your life ili kila kitu ambacho utakifanya sio tu kwa christmas hii ila kila kitu utafanya utafanya mlango wa roho wako ukuwe umefunguliwa kwa Yesu as you be eating jesus will be in your life unapokuwa ukikula utakuwa na Yesu ndani mwako you will seek fellowship with him utatafuta ushirika na yeye and therefore you will be a source of transformation to the people you are going to gather with during this holiday na kwa hivyo wewe utakuwa ni chanzo cha mabadiliko kwa watu ambao utakutana nao katika msimu huu this one thing the lord is saying jambo hili bwana alisema Material blessings are not a sign of the Lord being with you. Ni kwamba mali ionekanayo sio ishara ya Mungu kuwa nawe. You could have all, all it takes. Unaweza kuwa na kila kitu kinachohitajika. The vehicles. Magari. The plots. Na poroti. You could have all those. Unaweza kuwa na hivyo vyote. But the Lord is knocking at the door. Lakini Bwana bado anabisha katika mlango. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Will you be willing to open for him today? Je, uko radhi kumfungulia? Will you be willing to open for him? Je, utakuwa radhi kumfungulia? Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. He has been locking for a long time. Amekuwa kibisha kwa muda mrefu. While we've been busy with our religious rituals. Na sisi tumekuwa na mambo yetu ya kidini kila wakati. We come because it's a Sunday. Tunakuja kwa sababu ni siku ya Jumapili. We lift our hands because people are lifting. Tunainua mikono kwa sababu wengine wanainua. But is he is he really there? Lakini je, yuko? Is he really there? Je, yuko? When was the last time you fellowshiped with him and you knew you talked with him? Siku gani ilikuwa yako ya mwisho kushiriki naye na ukajua umenena naye? Asinga sanga and say. Mibaji akaimba na akasema. I know my redeemer lives. Najua mkobozi wangu yuko. I spoke with him this morning. Kwa sababu niongee naye asubuhi ya leo. Did you speak with him this Je, morning? Je, ulinena naye asubuhi? She goes on to say I know that I know that I know that I know do you know that you know that you know Na nazidi kusema najua na najua je wewe unafahamu kwamba unajua Praise the name of the Lord Bwana asifiwe I want to just request us to stand Na ningetaka kuuliza tusimameni It's a message that I'm telling God to help me Ni ujumbe ambao naambia Mungu unanisaidie And I'm asking God to help you Na namwambia na muomba Mungu akusaidie pia That we may open for him the door kwa sababu tutamfungulia mlango that we may open for him the door kwa sababu tutamfungulia ule mlango and as the ministry teams that just position themselves wa huduma wanapochukua nafasi zao in a reflective mood uh, kwa jia bao unatafakari you could just be asking yourself unaweza kuona jiuliza enyewe when did i last have fellowship with him kwa lini mara ya mwisho nikakuwa ushirika naye When did I last have fellowship? Siku gani ilikuwa yangu ya mwisho kupata ushirika na yeye? When did I last enjoy my prayer life? Siku gani ya mwisho nilifurahia maisha yangu ya maombi? Times we lose him because we are caring so much about our neighbor. 
Na wakati mwingine tunampoteza kwa sababu tuko makini sana kuhusu jirani zetu. I know the word is mine. Najua kwamba neno ni langu. But if I walked and went and connected and opened the door for him, what will this neighbor nikio, think of me? Nikiondoka na nienda niunganike naye nifungue mlango, je, huyu jirani huyu atanifikiria nini? Neighbor alone. Achana na huyo jirani. You don't know about their relationship with God. Ujue uhusiano wake na Mungu. It's about you. It's about you. You could still be born again. We are not questioning that. You're born again. But could you have lost fellowship with him? Could you have lost fellowship with him? Lost fellowship because of discouragement. So much that we've gone through as a nation, you are discouraged. You're even seated there and you're wondering where am I going to get fair to my up country? You are discouraged. Remember Christmas is not about up country, it's about Jesus. And you can fellowship with Jesus wherever it is that you are. The altar is open. You can come. Take a step and just come. Hallelujah. This altar is open. He can transform your life. When, they, when, when Mary and Joseph realized that they had lost Jesus, they opted to start walking. They looked for him for three days and found him in the temple. This morning, I don't know when you lost him, but you can still come right in the presence of God and you will find Jesus. You will find Jesus. Mm. Do not hesitate. The altar is open for you. He is the one who takes away our shame. Oh God, we thank you. Keep coming, we still have people here. We exalt you. We exalt your mighty name. And maybe you're there, you were once born again. But you gave up, you backslid. And you've always been asking yourself, of what use is it? Of what use is it? The Lord is saying, come. I'm still available for you. I'm still available for you. You could have fallen, just drifted and fallen. But he's saying, my son, I love you. And I cannot let you go. I cannot let you go. Oh God, we thank you. Those who are still on the pews, if you could just close your eyes and be in worship, be in prayer. Reflecting, have you lost him? Have you lost him? Oh God. Mary was very close to Jesus, but he but she lost she lost the son. Could it be that you've been walking with an angel instead of the Lord? <laughs> and it has been okay because after all there's blessing, material blessing that is coming your way so you've been saying it is okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. He is faithful. He is faithful. He receives young, old men, men women. He receives them alike. Keep coming, keep coming. Don't hesitate. Just keep coming. We are not in a hurry. All that is interesting us is that you can open the door so that Jesus can come and fellowship with you. He can dine with you. 
He can dine with you. Ili apate mahukuli pamoja naye. Give you praise Jesus. Jesus. You're good, you're good Jesus. I give you praise oh God. If you have Jesus it will change. Kama unaye Yesu yatabadilika. It will change your Christmas in this season. Atabadilisha Christmas yako kwa majira haya. You could be upstairs keep coming. Unaweza kuko kule juu. And you can even give your life to Jesus Christ this day. Hata unaweza toa maisha yako kwa Yesu asubuhi yake. You can give your life to Jesus. Unaweza toa maisha yako kwa Yesu. You can give your life to Jesus. Unaweza toa maisha yako kwa Yesu.